Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to be taking a look at the newest release of Stormfish OS. But before we get started, I need to go over something with y'all real quick. In yesterday's video, I told you we were trying to get a store set up and we were going to start off with the Arch hoodies. Well, let me show you this. We've got it up and running. We've only got basically one product on it now, which was the Arch. And we actually got a second one, which is a fun one, pseudo app, get install a life. But I'm going to put the link in the description below. And what we're going to try to do is get two or three different products a week put up covering the different Linux distributions that are out there, maybe some fun t-shirts like, you know, fix all your Windows problems, install Linux, just going to have fun with it and be able to give people a place to buy products that support Linux and let them show their pride in using Linux. So I'll make sure to include that link in the description below. If you would, just zip on over, look at it, let me know what you think suggest changes. I want to mold this to what you guys really want and what will be very successful to make the channel grow even more. That way I can do a lot more content and cover the Linux news that needs to be covered. So let's go back over to Stormfish's desktop. Now, if you want to download Stormfish OS, put it on a USB or throw it in a virtual machine and take it a test drive, you're going to have to go here on SourceForge, and you can come over here, and they've got a couple different ones you want to look at, but first I want to come up and let you know that it's featuring three different respins of KDE Neon and two custom spins of XFCE that are based on Ubuntu, intended for older PCs, and one Arch XFC distro that's for modern machines. It's got Samba active on start, so the minute you boot into it, Samba is ready to go. Then you've got Cups for your printing, and if you go over to Files... You can go right here where it says ISO. Plus, he gives you some information right here. He says, we have updated and completing testing for Stormfish OS 13, the KDE Core Edition, Office Edition, and the XFCE Standard Editions. If you click on ISO, you'll notice right here, you've got the KDE Office Edition, the KDE Final, your XFCE Final, and then your Arch XFCE, then your XFCE Gaming Edition. So you've got different ones to look at here. Okay, so this is where you go to download, and I'll make sure, like I said, to include that link in the description below. So we'll go back over to the desktop, and as you can see, it has a very beautiful wallpaper. And then up top here, you've got installation instructions, WGetem, and then calendars, which is a neat little calendar app if you want to use it. You've got show desktop, you've got date and time, then you've got your hidden icons right here, which cover notifications, clipboard, night color control, vaults. KDE Connect, which is really awesome. If you have an Android or an iPhone, you can download the KDE Connect in the App Store, put it on your phone, then you can link it to your PC or your laptop, and that gives you a way to receive messages, see missed calls. I even use mine as kind of a remote control for my laptop. So if that's something you haven't tried out yet, I would definitely recommend zipping on over and downloading the KDE Connect on the Google Play Store or the Apple iTunes Store and syncing it up with your PC and taking it for a run. And then you've got your lock key status, so we'll go ahead and minimize that. Internet, most recent USB device, battery, sound. There's your HP LIP status service, which is the cups that lets you run your HP printer. Then you've got display configuration and weather. And this one recognized mine right off the bat. If I click on it, it'll let you know the weather right there. It's actually sunny outside and my high today is going to be 57 degrees. Now with it being KDE, if you're not familiar with it, all you got to do is right click on the bottom panel. And right here you can enter edit mode, add panel, widgets, show alternatives, configure icons. You can go down here to edit. And right over here on more options, you can do a panel alignment. You can align it to the left, center it up, go to the right. And then visibility, always visible, auto hide, windows can cover, windows go below. And then on your opacity, adaptive, opaque, or translucent. And then, of course, you can adjust the size of your panel if you wanted to run that up a little bit. Everything kind of scales itself to make it easier to use and easier to see. If you're like me and you have to wear glasses, that comes in handy. And then, of course, over here, you can add widgets. If you open up the widgets, right here it gives you a list of different widgets you can add. You can add those to your desktop or you can add them down here to your taskbar. Okay. Now, if there are widgets up here that you want but you don't see them, you can go up here to get new widgets and do a search. Find the widget you want and then you're good to go. You can download it, install it, and then put it wherever you want on your system. So we'll go ahead and close out of that and close out of that. Now, you come back down over here to the left. You've got Install Stormfish OS. 
and you've got the Brave browser, Synaptic Package Manager. Let's go ahead and open that up. And Synaptic is pretty easy to use with this being based on Ubuntu. It makes installing software and updating your system rather easy. You've got different ways you can do it here. You can actually come over here and do it by category if you would like. Okay. If you don't want to do it by category, you can actually do a search. You can go up here and click on search. And if you were looking for something like Caden Live, you could just put in Caden Live and click search. And what it'll do is it'll highlight your search over here and then give you a list right here. Caden Live, Caden Live Data, Caden Live Debug. So what you can do is you can go over here and mark that for installation. It'll bring up other dependencies that are required. Go ahead and mark all of those as well. And then go ahead and click on the debug as well. And once you have them all selected, just come up here and click apply and it would install it on your system. Okay. Now you can do that through Synaptic, but they also have the Discover Software Center, which we'll go over here in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And then you've got your terminal. Let's go ahead and open that up. And it shows right here that it's Stormfish OS 8664, kernel version 5.11.0-46 generic. And then what theme you're using, let's go ahead and run top. And right now I have three gigabytes of RAM issued to this virtual machine at present with just the terminal open, we are using right at 856 megabytes. So it's probably mid-range. It's not lightweight and it's definitely not heavy. But you can use it on slightly older hardware and not have a problem with it at all. Now, I do want to say this. This is the KDE version. If you download and run the XFCE version, it's going to definitely be a little lighter than this. It'll probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 to 600 megabytes. Now, I have people all the time tell me, why are you so worried about it? Because RAM that's not being used is just wasted RAM. I disagree with that. I think if you have RAM on your system, it should be utilized for the applications and multitasking that you're doing as opposed to just having an operating system up and running. So let's go ahead and check out File Manager. And as it opens up, let's go ahead and maximize it. And as you can tell, this is Files. So let's go ahead and double check that. And it is Files version 3.36.3 stable. It's pretty easy, quick, lightweight file manager. You've got your usual suspects over here. And of course, you've got your home folders right here. And I love the theme that he's using here. I like the, the aquamarine or really light green that's being used here. I am slightly colorblind, so if I'm off on the color, please give me a break. So I'll go ahead and close out of that. And then we've got settings. And with KDE, as you all know, if you've watched any of my videos, you have so many different settings to customize the look and feel of KDE. You can go with a light theme or dark theme. Right now, we're presently on the dark. And if you wanted to go to appearance, you could come over here. You've got your global theme, which you've got breeze, breeze dark, breeze twilight, and Manjaro Scion global out of the box. Now, if you want a different theme, all you got to do is come down here and get new global themes, show highest rated. And then if you wanted to, you can even do a search, something like lay-in which is right there. That's my preferred theme, but everybody has their own way that they want to customize their system. So that's just a way to get more global themes. And you can do that as well with icons, cursors, fonts. You can pretty much download and customize KDE any way you would like to. You also have workspace behavior, window management, shortcut, startup and shutdown. I will link a video at the end of this that goes over KDE in the specific different settings that you can change. It's a very informative video. You can go through that and it covers everything that's listed here in the settings, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that. And then last but not least down here pinned is the Discover Software Center. And if you're familiar with Ubuntu and things like that, you're gonna be familiar with Discover. So it pops up and it gives you some right here, right off the bat that are your featured. You can also go over to applications. And you got accessibility, accessories, games, multimedia. Let's go ahead and click on that. And you've got Blanket, VLC, Muse Score, Play It, Lollipop. You've got a lot of different things you can install here. Or you can go back and you can search in applications. Let's look for something like LibreOffice and see if it brings it up. And there's LibreOffice right there. You can install it from a flat pack or you can install it from Snap right here. So it makes it pretty easy to install. Okay, that's just another way that you can install apps and update your system in Stormfish OS. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Now, if you come over here and click on the app launcher, it'll bring up all applications, development. You've got an icon browser, graphics. You've got Blue Recorder, GwynView, Internet. You've got your Brave browser, transmission for your torrent client, VLC, MPV. You've got your actual document viewer and then your settings. 
system. You've got your info center, discover, USB formatter and image writer, utilities, you've got files, Kate, mouse pad, spectacle, text editor, help. You've just got your basic things over here that you can access through your application launcher. Now, I do want to say this. Since you don't have a version of Linux Mint anymore that runs KDE, and you've got Kubuntu that's out there, I actually like Stormfish better than I do Kubuntu. It seems to run faster on my system. It seems to run lighter on my system. I'm just telling y'all, if you like KDE and you like the Ubuntu family, Stormfish OS is definitely an operating system you need to zip on over, download, throw on a USB stick, or put in a virtual machine and take for a test drive. I'm sure that you'll end up liking it and installing it. Stormfish OS, let me know. Is it something you might give a test drive to? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget, like I said at the beginning of the video, our store is finally up. It doesn't have a lot on it right now, but if you would, please zip on over and take a look at it. The link will be in the description below. Let me know what you think. Give me some ideas. What would you like to see on the eBuzz Central store? Before you go today, do me a big favor. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.